Right. The heavyweight main event between Maurice Smith and Marco Huaz, the kickboxer against the Huaz Valley Tudo fighter. Two legends re-enter the octagon tonight. Maurice Smith entered the octagon as one of the most elite martial artists in the world. Already a WKA and ISKA kickboxing champion, Smith was also the extreme fighting heavyweight champion when he took on heavily favored Mark the Hammer Coleman at UFC 14. What happened that night became mixed martial arts and UFC history. But right now, he's got to handle some big punches from Mark Coleman. There are a lot of right hands, a plethora of rights. Smith gets behind him and gets up. And Smith is back on his feet where he wants to be. A right hand by Maurice Smith and a combination. There's the kick to the head. And new UFC heavyweight champion of the world, His first defense took place only three months later at UFC 15. Tank Abbott, the UFC's bad boy, would be his opponent, but was hardly any competition. The champion kept Abbott at bay with thunderous leg kicks until the tank called it quits. Mo Smith had defended his UFC championship, was a perfect 2-0 in the octagon, and found himself the top dog in the toughest full contact event in the world. Championship, are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get it on! It is underway. The heavyweight championship in the UFC. Smith, the striker, on his feet, well, can be devastating. There you go. Couture obviously would like to take it to the ground as soon as possible. Down now. All right. Keep moving, keep moving. Go right, Mo. And an elbow. There's the strike from the bottom we anticipated. We might see from Maurice Smith. It did no damage, though, on Randy Couture. And under two minutes remains here now in overtime. And Randy's, our match. Randy's locked around his head. He's got it real, real tight. The arm to the head. Maurice really can't move in this pressure there. You can see Maurice is not comfortable. The winner and new UFC. A disappointed Smith fell out of the spotlight, choosing to focus on his alliance stable of fighters for the UFC and wait to decide on the future of his fight career. It would be over a year until Mari Smith re-entered the octagon at last March's UFC 19. A classic confrontation, this savvy veteran versus the high-flying youngster. But on this night, youth would prevail as Randleman controlled the smaller Smith and Mo was unable to uncork his deadly right hand. And so tonight, Maurice Smith stands at the crossroads, decorated at every level of competition, a champion four times over in his professional career, but coming off two disappointing performances and losses in the octagon. At age 37, the former champ still believes he's got what it takes to compete at this level. The world finds out tonight. I'm out just to provide, pr prove that I'm a good fighter and I'm a worthy opponent and that you know nobody's gonna walk over me ever ever, ever, ever. And I figure with another two, three years left in my career fighting, I will be definitely in the top 10, top five fighters for sure. Uh, he's a veteran, so are you, so is that man next to me, my partner Jeff Blatnick. Ken, your thoughts of Maury Smith, how good is he? Maury Smith is uh, probably the best stand-up fighter in, in our business today. Uh, the thing that worries me about Maurice and a lot of other fighters is after they've been in the octagon several times and they suffer from a defeat, uh, something breaks down inside and they're not the warrior they used to be. Now, if Maurice comes out and fight like the old Maurice, he's going to dominate Marco Huas. Now, Marco Huas is in the same situation is that he got, you know, he's had some problems in his, uh, his last couple fights and they haven't, he hasn't brought out the warrior spirit. So it'll be interesting to see if both these guys come out and fight like warriors and bring back the old them. Two-part question here, important question. When Marco Huas won his title in... UFC 7 you were fighting in a super fight so he didn't have to go through you that day everyone in this building everyone in the world of the UFC wants you to come back inside the octagon first and foremost tell us what's your latest gig in the WWF and how that's going in second is there a chance we could see you back inside there well July 25th I'm uh, I got a pay-per-view in Buffalo and it's going to be kind of a different thing. It's going to be uh, the Iron Circle. We fight with a circle of cars. And so I'm enjoying my career in WWF. 
But uh, you know what? Uh, I, I had to sit down with uh, with uh, uh, some of the office people in uh, WWF, and we've come to an agreement where that I'm going to get a little time off and come back and compete in no holds barred. This is uh, what I love to do. I love the WWF. I want to continue to do that, but I need to finish what I started here, and I don't feel like I finished what I needed to start. I want to step out of here understanding either I'm the best fighter in the world still today or that I'm too old. One of the two, but I will find out, and the people will know. And I think, for me, I need to know this in order for me to move on with my life. Look, what a great night here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, with Ken Shamrock vowing that he may and he wants to return inside the octagon, fight in the UFC. Let's take a look at Marco Huas. The opponent tonight of Maurice Smith, Marco Huas, a runner-up in Ultimate Ultimate 95, the champion of the tournament of UFC 7. In order to track the UFC career of Marco Huas, we go back to the early days of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. It was UFC 6, July of 1995, and a new Brazilian fighter was being introduced to the UFC's American audience, a virtual unknown outside of Brazil at the time. The king of the streets would have an opportunity to live up to his name in the octagon only a few months later in Buffalo at UFC 7. In his debut fight, Huas immediately showed off his ground game by defeating Larry Curtin via leg lock. He moved on to the semifinals to take on Remco Pardue, winning a grueling 12-minute bout that saw Huas showcase a variety of weapons in his arsenal. In his third and final fight of the night, Huas took on massive Paul Varlins for the UFC 7 Tournament Championship. Again, it was a war. Over 13 minutes, the two warriors exchanged everything from punches to kicks to even more bizarre and ingenious tactics. But in the end, it was Huas reducing Varlin's tree trunk-sized legs to mere kindling with several powerful leg kicks, sending the 300-pounder crumbling to the ground. Huas had taken out three men in one night and was crowned the UFC 7 champion. The king of the streets had lived up to all the hype. Marco Huas was for real. Because of his impressive showing, Huas immediately qualified for the UFC's first tournament of champions, Ultimate Ultimate 1995. He faced UFC veteran Keith Hackney in the first round and again outclassed his opponent, winning via choke in the third minute. In the semis, Huas went head-to-head -head with one of the toughest men to ever enter the octagon, the Russian bear, Oleg Taktarov. After a 20-minute seesaw battle, Taktarov took the controversial decision. A disgusted Huas left the octagon that night and has only returned in a management capacity, working the corner for Huas Valle Tudo student and rising UFC star, Pedro Rizzo. Still fighting internationally, Huas feels he hasn't lost a step since his UFC debut. But the fact remains, it's been three and a half years since Marco Huas stepped into the octagon. Can this once great champion recapture the glory he found that night in Buffalo? Tonight, we'll find out. We are champion. I'll give my best. I'm back to win. Now we know that he is back to win, Ken Shamrock. We'll ask you the same question at a later date because that's about the same time frame since you've been inside the octagon, but three and a half years is a long time. Yeah, it's a long time, and he's fought other places. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a, one of those fights in a stand-up game. I think that uh, Marco Huas has to get it to the ground and try and get off some of his punches on the ground and try and score some points. But don't look for a very, uh, very uh, exciting fight standing up because both these guys are real tactical on how they're throwing their punches and kick. The only time you're going to see anything really explode is if someone hurts the other guy and then they're going to go in and finish him. But this is a, a typical uh, a fight where you've got two good stand-up fighters. I think Maurice has the better, better skills standing up and, uh, and uh, Marco Huas has the better skills on the ground. Uh, but, you know, like I said, in this type of thing, both these guys have to come out with a warrior spirit in order to fight this thing, or anybody can beat anybody anywhere. Ken, I have a question for you. Do you think it's going to be overcoming rust on skills, having you know, been away from the octagon so long, or do you think it's going to be a question of stamina, conditioning, who can outlast the other? No, I think it's going to be a question of mental will. Mental will. Mental will. Both have demonstrated it in the past. This is our heavyweight main event, Maurice Smith against Marco Huas. Neither are youngsters. Who knows, maybe there'll be a new division for great heroes like this. 38-year-old Marco Huas with still probably about 2% body fat. Trust me, 
He's in outstanding condition. He's ready. He is excited. And as we told you a moment ago, it's been nearly four years. He said to us yesterday, the UFC is like your first girlfriend. Unfortunately, you don't want to ever say it to your wife, but you're always going to love her, and you're always going to want to come back. And he is more experienced, more comfortable, and he knows that this is the most important fight of his life. Do you think they take that much abuse at home? I hope not. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're married, I'm married, Jeff's married. Absolutely not. There you go. Maurice Smith, the Iceman, now in the alliance with Suyoshi Kosaka, already victorious tonight. And Frank Shamrock, who made a big announcement tonight that he will return to the Octagon in September to fight for his middleweight belt. The former champion lost his belt in Japan to Randy Couture. The decision went the distance. Wasn't a good night for him at UFC 19 against Kevin Randleman. This is his fifth venture inside the octagon, and he is truly the master striker. There we go. He's learned a lot of grappling from Frank Shamrock, who learned a lot of grappling from Ken Shamrock in his training in the Lions Den. And Maury Smith has also worked out directly with Ken Shamrock, who will join us. In the broadcast booth for this fight, just four pounds of difference. The age is getting up there as we tease Maurice the last couple of days. He says, I am going to fight until I can't fight any longer. 37, 38 year olds, a fight for the ages here in UFC 21 between Hu Austin Smith. Here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is the heavyweight main event of the evening. This event epitomizes UFC 21 the return of the champions. Beginning this three round bout with our fighter standing to my left. He is a ballet judo expert with a UFC record of four and one. He is the UFC seven tournament champion and is also a veteran of ultimate, ultimate 95. Standing six feet, one inch tall, weighing in at 220 pounds, fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Please welcome back to the Octagon, the king of the streets, Marco Puja. And his opponent, standing to my right, he is no stranger to the Octagon. He is a kickboxer with a mixed martial arts record of four and two. He is a veteran of UFC 14, UFC 15, Ultimate Japan, and UFC 19. Standing six feet, two inches tall, weighing in at 216 pounds, fighting out of Seattle, Washington. He is the former UFC Heavyweight Champion of the World, please welcome back Maurice Smith. And our referee for this final event is Big John McCarthy. Chief referee Big John McCarthy to work this fight for the ages. Both boxers, fighters again. Wearing gloves provided by Boxer Gentix, and we thank them for their support in the UFC. Heavyweight main event. All right, here we go, gentlemen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's get it all. Come on. Yeah, who's going to cross over and throw the first punch to say hello? I think has to press the fight uh, and try and break. Uh, now, see, that's what's going to happen. And now, Mahouis is going to have to get in close and take him down because he's not going to wear Maurice out on the stand up. Maurice feels he has something to prove again tonight after he could not do anything against the sheer size and strength of the wrestler Kevin Randleman. He looked horrible against Randleman. Never got a right hand off. And Huas now able to take Smith down. Smith very confident in his guard. Has done well against some of our former champions you using guard. But Marco Huas, consummate ground fighter, will now be his test. This is where uh, Huas has got to win the fight is right here. If he doesn't start getting busy here and get stood up again, this is where it's going to hurt him. He's got to win the fight on the ground because I think Maurice has got too many skills stand up for him to try and win it there. He's got to do it here. Marco's been working a lot, not surprisingly, on his endurance for this fight. He bulked up 
bit too much earlier in his career. He's concentrated more on conditioning and on his grappling. And getting set to come back and try to regain that true moniker of King of the Streets. This is where a lot of fighters make a mistake when they get in position like this. They don't go ahead and release the head and just go ahead and get off some strikes. There's no reason why he doesn't pop up and start laying some punches in there. He's holding him. He's not doing anything. His back's against the fence. It's a great Watch position for him to pop his head out and start striking. Um, this is confidence right here. He's just being confident enough to be able to pop out and go ahead and start throwing some strikes. As Maurice will stay here all day, he's in no trouble because he's not getting hit with anything. There's Frank Shamrock in the corner of Maurice Smith. The Alliance truly back together. Frank back at a UFC venue after his honeymoon. Ken talked about it. He's going to fight in September. And right now, he's just Maurice Smith's biggest supporter. He and Suyoshi Kasaka. Do you see and Maurice's see head outside? He he's, he could, he, could be kneeing him very he back to the yeah, yeah, He hasn't done it at all. Stomach. He's got all kinds of strikes yeah, open, but I don't. Relax. Like I said, it's whether or not you're going to come out and fight like a warrior and let it all go. Come on, gentlemen, you got to do it something. Seems as though Huas is just content to control. He has not moved up Smith's body at all, and he's losing now the hold on his legs. Maurice doesn't need to try and choke here because he's going to blow his hands up. He doesn't have anything. He needs to just get to his feet right now. Mo needs to get to his feet. Come on. And it's a big advantage to be in your corner. Smith able to take advice not only from brother, excuse me, from uh, Alliance member Frank uh, Shamrock, but also from Kosaka as well. Yeah, it's, uh, you got people in your ear and they're telling you things that you don't see. It's, it, that does help. Now we saw it for Tim Lasik with Eugene Jackson in his corner earlier tonight. Good debut for Tim Lasik. That shot. That's it. Yeah, Take this is what Moe is doing. He's striking from here and scores some points. I mean, let's face it. Again. This is, uh, these are rounds and points keep count. This is where he could be making some points. Elbow in there. You could be uh, punching. Um, neither one of these guys, uh, uh, you know, it's like we talked earlier. They've got to come out and fight like warriors and try to win the fight. Speaking of Portuguese, uh, in the corner of Marco Huas, that is for sure. So trained as manager of Marco Huas. He's got a lot of great students, including Pedro the Rock Hizzo. Right now, the fight uh, is leaning more towards Huas because this is where Huas needs to be. Mo uh, is a great is defense. He, is he scoring? That's who he, Huas got the takedown, but from there, he has yet to throw a single strike. He has yet to try any kind of submission. Very good at control, keeping Smith down. But this game's about scoring. You see this level here where you see this both sides are blocked off. If Mo could turn him that way, he could roll him over very easily. He has a leg trap, he's got the arm trap. All he has to do is turn his body, he has no pivot. Uh, Guas is pretty low, though, between his legs, making it a little more difficult. If his hips come up, though, Ken, you're right. You get that center of gravity up, maybe like Kasaka did earlier. And that's he bridges, basic. he bridges up on his far foot. He bridges up on that and traps the leg and the arm, he will get his hips up. Maurice now starting to scoot. Looking for a leg lock right away is Marco Huas. He's working the left leg is Marco Huas of Maurice Smith. Now he's got it pretty good. He's got two on one. Maurice needs to be careful which way he turns. He'll hook him. Right there. There you go. Oh, he's got a shot. And good job by Maurice Smith. And Ken was all over that one. He said that Marco Huas is trying to lock it in, Jeff, but Maurice got a shot. And that made Marco flinch and drop the attempted submission. Leg locks are tough to get unless you can get a two-on-one and really get control of the opponent's body. And that's where working with Frank and obviously uh, Kosaka helps him both very good at submissions, very technical at submissions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Elbow. Uh, elbow. Marco Hoss works with some people, but I don't think he works with his talented people it's like Frank and uh, TK, guys that are really specialists in leg submissions. Round one's about to come yeah. to the close. Yeah. Sorry, again. again. He got and he had it cranked a bit, but nonetheless, the horn sounds to signify the end of round one. Good, nice. I don't know. To me, it sounds like uh, it don't look like he was ahead. Good. No more low kicks. He's just going to catch Huas you. Marco Huas left okay? back to his corner. You're going to go high, and you're going to punch. Marco Huas is now sitting on the octagon mat, holding his left knee. Uh, this, this is. Uh, Stand up, Marco. You can beat him. Stand up, Marco. Stand up, Marco. Stand up. No, Stand up. Like don't quit. No quit. No quit. Stand up, Marco. Stand up, Marco. You're a man. Well, Stand up. Said anything. Fight well, for your family. He's just trying to stretch the leg out, but it, it's definitely bothering him. Maybe in that flurry of trying to hook up Maurice's leg, he got his knee twisted. It didn't appear that Maurice ever really locked anything out to cause any kind of submission or damage. It takes a lot of uh, a lot of skill to be able to uh, keep moving from one leg lock to one leg lock. Now watch some of this knee stuff right here, guys. Maybe this is where it got twisted. You see, we get two on one. 
one right there. Right there. If he would have kept Maurice the other way, threw Maurice away from where he's turning, he'd have had a great Akali's lock. He can't finish. He can't go. The left knee is damaged. And Maurice Smith wins this fight for the ages. He twisted something in the knee of Marco Huas. And the king of the streets cannot come out for round number two. Well, he limped away from that last submission attempt after he got up off the mat to go to his corner. And apparently he is not able to move that knee properly and feels as though he's vulnerable if he goes back out there and has, has given up at this point. Let's go to Bruce Buffer with our decision. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the first round, Marco Huas's corner has thrown in the towel. For the winner, Maurice Smith! Well, Ken, you talked about the stand-up battle going to Maurice Smith, but it appeared that once they got on the ground and Marco Huas's attempted submission ultimately was his downfall. Yeah, but uh, if you look at it, Marco Huas was the uh, more skilled. Uh, he tried for a lot of different submission holds. Uh, he didn't oh, yeah. get them. It takes, a, it oh, yeah. takes a lot of skill to be able to hook those down when the guy's slippery. But uh, I, I saw Marco Huas more controlling on the ground, and I knew that was going to happen. And Mo knew that was going to happen, but he had to move and keep moving until he could get his shot. But unfortunately, uh, you know, Marco hurt himself trying to go for submission. But it wasn't anything that Maurice did. It was something he did to himself. And... Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a sad to get to see something in like this. Well, it was all Marco Huas until Marco went after one of Maurice Smith's legs, tried to hook a submission in there, and through all of this maneuvering, with countering by Maurice Smith, came back on top, and that one right hand changed the course of this fight. It would Smith being on top now would start to land some strikes. Here, right here he's set for another leg lock, but... Uh, you can't get it like that. You he was get way up on the calf. He wasn't down low, and Smith able to turn around. You see how his legs are open? You can't, you can't do it. You got legs got to be so tight on that knee that there's no room for him to spin his hips out. That's where he lost him. Well, our expert commentator in the booth here is Ken Shamrock. Ken, we want to thank you for joining us here in the booth. We want to wish you well with your career with the WWF, and we certainly look forward to your thoughts and hopefully your presence.